It was the age of wonder, a time of old. Also, people like to talk during films, apparently, that they can just stream. <laughs> Welcome, gang. Cranston Pennyweather, joined by me, Rudy Land. I don't know where I got that name from. <laughs> Today is a special day. We saw a special blank corporate company's event. Yes. A film, a beautiful little film, a nice little film, 82. You guys got it yet? Hey, you fucking rubes, how long is this going to take you? I mentioned in the last video. <laughs> the Dark Crystal. Tell us. The Dark Crystal. Not seeing the Dark Crystal in a while. What'd you think? Well, um... I just, I mean, it was beautiful. I mean, that's that's the one thing to say right off the bat. Um, yeah. I hadn't seen it in probably over 20 years, you know, honestly. I don't. I really don't think I've seen it since VHS when I was so a like, kid. It's like uh, go, you're going from goddamn cowboy times to space age. <laughs> right. Yeah. And um, to see it on the big screen, uh, you know, 4K restoration. Um, the 4K restoration looked really beautiful too, um, for it the most looked, part. It, there was a couple spots where it looked kind of grainy, yeah, like there, a little too grainy. There was, um, there was about maybe 10 or so shots that didn't look really remastered yeah. that I was like, ooh, you know, these don't, because the other scenes, like, they so Yeah, they a lot of them that, yeah, it looked it like... Looked so beautiful. It looked colors. like what you expect from a, a yeah. 4K restoration of a f movie on film. Yeah. And yeah, so this was a special event. I guess they're gonna have a 4K Blu-ray out soon, and because um, that's I think it's what, the 35th anniversary of the film. 36th. 36th. 82. Okay, and um, uh, I had actually forgot, but um, I guess Netflix is doing um, a uh, prequel series, and they're actually gonna be using puppetry, just like the film. I um, um I saw a teaser cool. of it. Yeah, I'm wondering if his daughter uh, is actually going to be making it. I was thinking that as I was watching the intro. I was yeah. like, they had, how, I wonder how much they had to pay her to get her to come and say this <laughs> right. thing. Right, because um, at the beginning of uh, of the movie, they have a little introduction beforehand, which had Jim Henson's daughter, and you see just... And she's screaming at you. She was literally <laughs> screaming at us. Yeah. <laughs> it was the loudest uh, yeah. per person talking at normal level I've ever heard. Yeah, the I, volume on the intro video was way too loud. Luckily, the movie was... The audio levels were good on the movie. <laughs> well, no, almost all of them. The, um, the commentators, they, they wouldn't let me get a word in edgewise. <laughs> It seemed like it would be one thing if it's just one person or one group talking, but right. all throughout the theater, all throughout the movie, it'd just come in waves, man. It'd go yeah. from up here to back there, and it would, the entire time. Yeah. If you're going to, especially, I could get it a new movie, you're some asshole, you don't really watch movies, you're just going to a new movie because that's what everyone's going to. It's a goddamn dark crystal, man, like, yeah. if you're going to just talk, stream it, download it. Right, yeah, there was these little kids in the front with their family. And, and they didn't they were... shush them or nothing. Didn't, yeah, it well, nuts. I mean, I'm kind of used to that. You know, when you go to see any type of children's film. Um, I'm, I can expect, like, every random ones every so often. Not the yeah. entire goddamn time. Well, I was shocked that there were as many people as yeah, there was. Yeah, me too. I was hoping to be just... I figured uh, it was the... just going to be you and me for the oh, most part. I was hoping. It would have been Maybe, like, two other people. Yeah. But uh, there was actually a pretty decent turnout for the movie. If it was just me and you, or just them, talk all the fucking talk the entire time for all you want, all you care, man. But everybody else is in there trying to watch this movie. Yeah, I really got way more upset than I should have. But it's like I got all pumped up. I want to see this movie on the big screen. Yeah, and every every couple minutes, it just 
Yeah, I, I was so focused on the movie, I could hear them, but it, it didn't really get under my skin. Is well, it's usually what normally what does. They and, weren't even whispering though. Right. They were talking loud, audibly enough so I could hear them. <laughs> and I was I was trying to focus on the film, but they were talking loud yeah. enough so I could hear their conversation. They're at least <laughs> fifteen, twenty feet at least from us. Yeah, and, and you, I could uh, hear. Their eventually, you couldn't take it anymore, and you said, uh, "You know, could you whisper for me?" <laughs> it was. I wanted to say something, but then it got to the point where that's the point where they're right. talking. When you're when you're talking, I can understand yeah. whispering. I'm not gonna enjoy it. I'll be a little upset. I mean, but if I can hear what you're saying to each other, the, the, it's, it's I mean, the way I feel about movie etiquette is like. You know, if someone's got their... You know, nobody was on their phone during the movie, which was good. We didn't see any fucking beams of light shooting out, which is the worst. Yeah. But, um, you know, with a kid's movie, I just hold it all in, even if it's we bad. We saw Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit was a bad kid's yeah. movie, and the kids acted better. Yeah, the parents didn't, though. And... Do you think that kids' <laughs> movies now are just designed to keep their attention for an hour and a half? Oh, yeah. I mean, kids' movies now are just, like, spastic. Just things are exploding all over the place. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was constant. thinking at the end of this movie, it told um... Because, um, you know, especially, like you said, after, after yeah. seeing Peter Rabbit and the the pacing of this movie. Yeah. I mean, because... It's this like, they might in... as well be Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, this, is, this was made in 82, and it just shows how drastically things well, have changed it's interesting as, it has um, a story it's interested in telling a story there's yeah. creative people behind it trying to tell their story and peter rabbit's just yeah. well, money grab man yeah and, and one of the biggest things is back then when people were shooting on film they had to edit on film so editing took way more time to make yeah. cuts now there's so many cuts in movies because everything's done digitally that Think it movies just are just faster. The mouse, it's just more literally. ADD. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's so ADD. Um, so at the beginning of the movie, you know, I kind of was like, oh, you know, you have to get back into that rhythm of, of an older kind of kids film, and then it, you know. Well, it's the great. thing about it is, it's not exactly a, kid, a kids film in that kids twelve to thirteen would maybe be able to grasp and understand what's yeah. going on. Anything I, under mm -hmm. yeah, you're you're not really gonna. You're not going to know what's going on. You're not going to yeah. have any idea. And it's funny because, you know, when I saw this when I was a kid, I just remember being so terrified by it. The puppets creeped me out so much. Yeah, that, that really did annoy me and took, brought me back the one uh, the vulture they do, creature. They do, they do do it way too many it, times, but yeah. it's, you know, it's his thing. Yeah, or, and I will say the main voice actor of... Um, Jen? Yeah, I keep wanting to say elflings, but they're not elflings. Gelfling. Gelfling. What the hell is an elfling? <laughs> Just the baby elf, I don't know. <laughs> Younglings. Jedi. But Jedi 3. His, um, his voice acting has not aged well. Nah. <laughs> but the girl... Um, yeah, she was pretty most, good. Most of all the voice actors like sound really good. See, the problem with the girl is she, she was the one who said the most made-up phrases. Like right. nonsense, fantasy language. Right, yeah. Which is what the whole movie was supposed to be, as a matter of fact. A whole made-up language or something. Yeah, but it that's didn't what test well. uh, we learned at the beginning of the movie, is that um, originally all of the vultures and, and all the other animals, they never spoke. They just had, you know, this kind of like, almost like Banjo-Kazooie, where everyone's just making yeah. weird noises. But it was, and, it uh, was it like... And screamed yeah. awful. Yeah. <laughs> and they were like, oh, we got to change this. And so they basically... You I don't know, know if I've heard this before, and... but it's pretty interesting. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that that was cool to learn before the movie. I kind of wish they didn't show an intro because yeah. they spoiled a lot, and I hadn't seen it in years, what and I forgot they, uh, so much. What did they just were by they showing They showed the scenes? very ending of the movie with the, the crystal and everything. Uh, the which, dark crystal. Yeah. And uh, I will yeah. say that... Um, I would say about 95% of the movie completely holds up. Like, yeah. when you're looking at it, it looks just gorgeous. There's a couple puppets that, that are a little suspect. The dog creature. Yeah, but it was, um, it, they were going for the, uh... That was kind of the cutesy, get yeah. the little kids, you know. Yeah. Um, Didn't bother, it doesn't And, bother. uh, there's one scene with some bats, uh, kind of flying when they send them off, and it's kind of animated, and, and that looked a little awkward. Yeah, it looked a little cheesy. But that's very, very minor. I mean, like I said, for a movie in 82, it, it just looks gorgeous. Uh, because you just brought it up, there's a moment, if you guys see this, at the end, where Agra, a witch-like creature, 
is standing above the action, watching down upon it, waiting to yeah. exclaim something about asunder. The two become one. <laughs> it looks, when it's just focused yeah. on her and zoomed on her, it looks good, because it was actually just a shot of her. When it's zoomed out on everything and it shows her, it looks, it looks like bad. they made an MS Paint or something. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it reminded me of, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen Peter Yates' Crawl, but mm -mm. there's a scene early in that movie where basically, to get those certain shots, they have blue screen. Yeah. At the time, they didn't have green screen, but it was blue screen, the early effects, and you can tell they're they're in front of a screen with these like little puppets to add that to the back, and it it, it just doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't hold up. Do you, but, uh, if you see Labyrinth, there's at least one singing and dancing routine where that is definitely the yeah. case. Which uh, they're going to be showing that too as well. What'd you I think guess, of the score? Uh, the music all was really beautiful, like when uh, the main character is playing a flute and everything. It's and there's yeah. a scene where. Um, it almost reminds me of Canto Bite. I don't, I don't know if it's Canto Bite, but... Canto the, um, Bite? No, that's from Last Jedi. Let me avoid that. Um, okay. The, from the original Star Wars where they go into the bar. Hey guys, in Last Jedi, <laughs> it turns out Luke invented AIDS. <laughs> Major spoiler. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, you know the, uh, the bar scene in the first Star Wars where all the yeah, aliens are playing? Yeah, the cantina scene. Yeah, the cantina, that's what I was trying to say. There's a scene like that in this movie with all those little guys who become slaves yeah. and they're playing all these instruments and the music's great. All this little kind yeah. of guitar and... Uh, if you take one part of that scene away, the music or the uh, puppetry, it would come off as really silly, I feel like, really goofy yeah. and... Yeah, the music has a very... Like, like you said, Lord of the Rings. There's this very adventure um, The main style. theme, I, I really enjoy the main theme. The... Yeah. It's um, it's truly a piece of art, you know. The movie, it it's it's so beautiful, and um, you know, I mean, you can't deny that. Just no. all of the puppets and and everything that went into the movie, it's um, you know, I wish I wish there were more films that had puppets in them because I don't think it's puppets versus non puppets. I think it's. A really creative team yeah. all working together for something well, for that they sure. can see the see yeah. the goal line, see the vision of. You know what I mean? Yeah, but for me, it's like my brain. Like even though you know the puppet is fake, yeah. it's a real object in the real world. In the in so that movie, in the go into the world flow, of the but... movie, it's an actual character. It's a right. living creature, yes, and because... we're invested in its yeah. its plight, its story. I guess. Yeah, because if you've never seen it before, there's no humans at all in the movie. It's all puppets. Um, but. You can obviously tell that there was actually some humans in the film. There wasn't supposed to be humans in the film. There's a few puppets where, come on, it's obvious. Uh, it's just well, a dude with some. Yeah, on his I mean, back. you know, but you don't really see their face. They hide yeah. the hair over it, and it didn't bother me. I was like, yeah. oh, okay, because they they couldn't do a puppet running. All the um, intelligent creatures who can speak and stuff, all hundred percent puppets. Yeah, and they they tend to stay in the same place. Yeah. Um, which which is cool, and um, I will say there was one scene where you could see a wire on the puppet. Did you notice that towards the end? Which uh, which scene? When uh, our main character is going into the volcano. I mean, kind of towards the end, where the crystal is, and he's climbing on the oh, wall. Oh yeah, yeah. I noticed it on my because TV of, the last time I yeah, watched you can, it. You can clearly see that there's a line on his back, a fish line. Digitally restored my ass. <laughs> Yeah, well, they didn't alter the film. That's obvious. They didn't go and uh, change, yeah. um, you know, change out any lines. Which you know, I appreciate that because yeah. then you are altering the film. But did you um, did you notice there was one moment right when they right before they got on the humanoid creatures that they rode? It looked super grainy, just out of nowhere. Just yeah, like there's, one, uh, one camera set. There's huh? definitely some shots where you can really notice the film grain. Yeah. And like I said, because you know people shoot digitally now, it really pops out when you see a movie that was shot on film. Yeah. And you, it takes a little while to get adjusted. We're in the um, th we're seeing it on a huge screen too. Yeah, which was great. It, it was really great. I to was see worried it. it'd be a small one of the smaller ones or something. No, they put us actually in a theater with a big screen, which was nice. Um, I was a little worried that they were gonna put us in 
in the small theater, which I well, have. Well, I mean, I I was if we could be like just you and me and like one other dude or something. Yeah, I'd go to the small one. Fuck yeah. <laughs> but you know, that is what it is. Yeah. How yeah. long has it been since you've seen it? I got it for Christmas a couple years ago. Um, so yeah. I don't know, within six, nine, ten months, something like oh, that. Oh yeah. Also, it's pretty fresh in your mind then. Yeah. But there's a whole, it's about, the whole reason why I wanted to see it again is because so soon is big screen, man. When's the next time it's going to be at the theater? I think in a couple days they're going to have another showing. I mean, like, after this moment oh, in time. Right. Oh, yeah, you're, you're, I mean, maybe in another 30 years you'll see uh, another, um, you know, what, um, screening of it. Or some, some you know. Uh, revival well, theater. I, I'm surprised, like, local theaters, not chains around here, don't play more, like, old movies a lot more. They'd probably be cheaper. Yeah. Um, probably wouldn't get a big turnout, but it's better than nothing, yeah. I suppose. I mean, I don't know if they do that in, like, New York City. I know they do it out in California. They have yeah. theaters that show older films. But uh, it would be cool, but I feel like a lot of people wouldn't show up. <laughs> That's kind of one of the problems, I think. Yeah. You know, you get a couple people like us, and then... <laughs> Maybe for the one, old, part. one old guy who watches in the back randomly. <laughs> when I was in line for this film, there was a man, a group of men, who were literally a foot away from me the entire time in line. I was at least four feet behind the people in front of me, and every time we lost someone from the line, to stay step for step for me, a foot away... I thought to myself, are you really, are you doing a bit right now or something? Is is this going to be on the internet? <laughs> what, what are you doing? Just a, a creep, a mm. creep lurker. Many of them. Hovering. Many of them in this world. <laughs> Got a lot of hoverers out there. What, um, did this remind you of any films, any movies? <sighs> Aside from Lord of the Rings, of course. Yeah, um, it's tough because it's so... It's, its own thing. It's a kids you know? movie with puppets, but it's a grand adventure battle. Yeah, I mean, sort of thing. I guess you would kind of bring up some of the kind of sword and sandals movies, like Conan the Barbarian, maybe a little, hmm. and get some feels of that. Um, the th you know, I did mention Peter Yates' Crawl, which is another yeah. kind of one of those adventure fantasy movies. I've never seen it. Should I see Crawl? Uh, there's a lot of good stuff in it. It's enjoyable. Okay. Um, there's an early Liam Neeson in it. <laughs> <laughs> the best Liam Neeson and, by yeah, far. Like I said, there's some there's some cool practical effects. I enjoyed it. It was like right after Star Wars came out, so there's shades of it trying to yeah. be like Star Wars. But yeah, yeah. It, it's a fantasy film. I think it's worth revisiting. It's fun. I didn't watch it sometime. This one, it um, it's just very clear. That's what I like about kids' movies. It's like they don't they don't try too hard to be super subtle. No, you know it's, I mean? it's right to the point. Yeah. The, um, essentially in this film, in a, whatever I said earlier, in a time of old, uh, you know, place of wizardry and stuff, a thousand years ago, a crystal, like, you know, enchant, didn't enchant the earth, but like, you know, it was like the shimmer, but good. <laughs> Gave shimmer. it life and stuff. Oh boy. Then it cracked, and two creatures appeared virtually opposite in every way and they're connected somehow because we see one get stabbed and then Not the other one bleed another random one just his hand gets stabbed in the same spot yeah symmetry sort of a yin and yang that's what yeah, i felt is, a lot about this movie. Yeah, there, sort of a yeah all things are connected um, yeah almost nope. the buddhist type mentality um, yeah I don't know if Which Jim is kind of Buddhist or not. But. It's kind of strange seeing. I was thinking that too, like sort of Chinese Frank things, Oz, Eastern um, kind of thing. I was yeah. thinking it's it's kind of clashes with sort of this European sort of music and kind of adventure. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if he was, but it was good. Yeah, it was. It, they combined to make a good Voltron. Yeah, Voltron. <laughs> yeah, um, it it works. Um, I don't know if it worked for the kids that were there. 
Yeah. Well, it was only like I think it was just problem. parents or grandparents who just wanted to see it, and so they brought the yeah. grandkids or little kids. The problem is they were too little, man. Yeah, they don't. They're not going to be able to comprehend what's going on. Well, I guess the world is just so different now. I mean, back when we were kids, it was just like you know well, movies were kind of <laughs> well the thing is i saw this i didn't see this for a while but like a movie like the never ending story when i was a kid i had no idea what it was about you know what i mean oh yeah i mean i that's another movie i haven't seen in like over 20 years i was hoping i'd see a preview for that yeah uh, i really like the, the music. i remember about the never ending story is the kid flying on the big dog yeah <laughs> he's a luck dragon don't you dare call him a big dog his name is falcor yeah. and one day I'm going to get to hug him and pet him and stuff. Oh, yeah. And he's going to descend upon my enemies. Yeah. What you guys don't know is uh, Rudy Land's a furry. <laughs> Rudy Land is not a furry, but he does love Falcor. If um, Falcor is out there, you can reach me at 867-5309. Ask for uh, Frank or something. Yeah, Frank. Frank in the back corner. Frank in the back corner. He's got his toe knife. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What else you like about the movie? What sort of? Uh, what else stuck out to you? Well, I mean, like you say, just the puppetry. You know, the the music. The um, effects, like we're, I'm not saying that the effects were like seamless. Like it was, and I was in a different world. You know, it's there was know, it's a one, puppet. There was one really cool sequence towards the very beginning where um, the uh, the one of the ancient ones is there's like this pot and there's like this um, the uh, mystics. Yeah, the mystics, and there's this like almost like ice like sculpture kind of going what in do they call it the dry pot. ice um yeah whatever the chemical is that, that i is. think basically they just shaped this object and then it would melt and then they would just reverse the footage it. and yeah. stuff for the shots um it was pretty, which it was, was good. cool it actually and, looks pretty good honestly oh yeah it, it really does like i say hold up about 95 percent uh i was shocked at how just great the map paintings look um, especially when they're doing like these shots of like mountains in the background, yeah. I was like, "Wow, this this looks better than CG to me." You yeah, know, it just I love that stuff. Well, and, because with the painting is so much more yeah. detail, you can yeah, and especially the fact that this was a 4K restoration, and still when you see it in such you know high definition, it still looks unbelievable. The sound um, quality was really good too. Yeah, you could hear everything. Um, I wasn't like, you know, oh man, I wish there were subtitles on. I don't understand what some of these characters are saying. So the audio was really good on the movie. Um, do you know why they made this movie? No. The whole big idea was kids movies weren't, he, Jim Henson thought it was, would be, was good for kids to feel fear. He thought it right. was a bad idea to go through life and not be afraid. Especially yeah. when you're a child, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's when you form, like... Well, that makes sense, because there's a lot of puppets that are just hideously ugly. I mean, I mean, they're gorgeous as far as the artistry of how they're made, but yeah. they're, like, ugly creatures. The Skeksis. <laughs> when that one got naked, it was nuts, man. I'm like, why does he have four tits? He just beat out that lady from Total Recall. Did, did you notice the, um... The... Mm -hmm. <laughs> did you notice the, the witch who had, pulls out her eyeball? Agra. And stuff, yeah. Do you notice that you, her nipples, like, are protruding through her shirt? I didn't <laughs> notice. Yeah. Like, you're, when you first, like, meet her in uh, this, like, uh, astrology thing with all the Observatory. Planets, yeah, observatory. Sort of observatory style um, thing. <laughs> they made, actually made nipples for her puppet. Yeah. And you can see As soon as you said that, it was like, out. they, they was went like, the extra mile to put like, nipples so on That's so weird <laughs> that they did that. A random alien creature <laughs> that also has nipples. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I mean, this definitely could freak some kids out. <laughs> well, yeah, it's the point, yeah, man. I, I th did, yeah. um, what uh, would you say are the more disturbing creatures? What are the most disturbing creatures here? Agra, you thought well, she was kind of creepy for a young kid? Yeah, she was creepy, but she's really kind of funny in a Yoda kind of way. Yeah, she's a, but, um, she's a friendly character. Honestly, for me, the creepiest creatures are um, the, the, the slaves. 
that they the vultures she, make. They look they, like when they pull their essence out of their eyes and uh, their eyeballs are like all white and their hair is gray. They're just like so disturbed. He was too motionless for me. <laughs> he was if he was maybe breathing or something, yeah. I could have done better. But it's literally they just they taped it to this little <laughs> set, so he's just motionless there. It didn't. It doesn't do it. They remind me of Cabbage Batch kids, honestly. Yeah, which are also very creepy. The Garbage Pail Kids and all that. Yeah. Very disturbing looking. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, but uh, when they don't have their life essence pulled out of them... They're, they're a lot they're, more lively, <laughs> so to say. They're a little more enjoyable. A little they more are, vitality. <laughs> they are still creepy, though. Yeah. But, um, I'm surprised they're the ones that creep you out. They look like little Cabbage Patch dolls. Um, like, like I said, when they're slaves, they just look so disturbing. <laughs> she, um, I'm happy. I forgot that they did that. The girl, the girl one, the girl the Gelfling, girl Gelfling, Jen, and whatever, whatever her name was. Right. I Jen, liked I after she got her essences sucked out. Wow. If we, <laughs> this might go on a pedophile website or something. Her essence sucked out. Um, not a pedophile, <laughs> but. Afterwards, she looked all tired and worn out and stuff. Yeah, that yeah, and she she calls the 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 the, the wild creatures to come help her. She tries. Kikalo, kikalo. <laughs> did I, I want to ask you? Did, did it bother you that the um the Galflings only had four fingers? Because that was really weird to me. I noticed I was just it like, once, and oh, then I didn't really think it, about it, just, it again. It, it really kept sticking out for me. I was like, oh, why couldn't it's they It's the opposite of finger? cartoons, man. <laughs> right. Cartoons only look good with four fingers, I yeah. guess. That that did look a little weird to me, where I was just like, oh, man, they couldn't add one extra finger. <laughs> did dumb? Um, what about the Skexes? Did they have, like, three fingers or four fingers or something? No, they had five. The vulture kind of creatures? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they had this big, like, cloth um, kind of a thing. And, yeah. And, you know, they they look the best, I think, out of everything. Like, I honestly, part. I was kind of thinking, I would like to have see, I'd like to see the original version of this, where they're speaking in like guttural tone, guttural sounds and stuff, yeah. and you just read subtitles. I, uh, I don't. It'd make it feel like a, you know, an old adventure, a real old adventure, you know. Yeah, I um, I understand why they changed it. I I don't know if that would have worked. I think that really probably would have graded on me for. It definitely you know. would have taken kids out of the equation. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I'm not so sure it it would have really worked. I mean, Jim Henson believed it really would have worked because, yeah. and you know, if I mean some of the things that they say, you know, could be a little less goofy and yeah. weird. Yeah. Were there any that stuck out to you? I really like the one who is in the essence chamber, who has like one eye. That I has saw that the, the uh, either a monocle or like a cyborg. Yeah, monocle. Yeah, it's like a cyborg monocle thing that glows. And um, one of the first images from the the prequel series that that Netflix is going to do, I guess they showed him. Um, because spoiler, alert, he dies in this movie. <laughs> yes, he falls <laughs> he into thrown. the lava chamber <laughs> by gets, animals. Yeah. Kikalo, kikalo. <laughs> Do a spot on impression of that. I'm a professional. You've been training? <laughs> always. I'm always ready. Always training. Um you know. Good film. Nice film. Yeah, it, it was enjoyable. It it was really nice to revisit it after all these years. Um and it's gonna be interesting to to see, you know, like I say, what, what Netflix does, you know. I um I'm not as excited about the Netflix thing. I Yeah. Everything that any of the revivals that Netflix has done, I just haven't even wanted to yeah. even try. Like Arrested Development was like the first one. I haven't even thought about watching yeah, the Netflix so. season. I haven't revisited it either. Kikalo! Kikalo! <laughs> <laughs> what, um... What do you think about vibrating? <laughs> vibrating pockets. Um... <laughs> What sort of what, think about vibrators? <laughs> going coming off of annihilation, what sort of reaction oh, do you have to the, to this based on that? Uh, well, obviously, um, both both had that more old school style of um, you know movies that take their time. You know, it, it's it's showing you the world, and you know you're getting to experience it and um, notice all the little details. But um, that's one thing about Henson movies I really enjoy. Yeah, he, a lot he, of details. Yeah, it's not, um, 
Because you, you're trying to build a world. You gotta, you gotta have that world inhabited by. Yeah, one, things, people, places, the details. Yeah, you know, the I, things that sell it. When I was watching, I, I was just like, "Wow, they like how many sets did they have to build like way beforehand? They must have had hundreds of just these sets." Yes, yeah. not to like, mention how much time it took. Like, oh my god, the dragon, the things that they rode just to, oh yeah, just to run like they did. Yeah, you can tell that that was kind of awkward. Like you can tell the the puppets are clearly like glued on those things. Like they're really not moving yeah. at all. You could but, tell, uh, when they were actually running. There was a couple scenes where they weren't showing the legs. I really suspect that they were just like on a cart being pulled, and they right. were just lifting their legs <laughs> periodically. Yeah, which you know that's okay. The special effects there was they're not the special effects are good. This sort of yeah. implementation of them isn't as great the um there's a quite a few times where it's clearly a small boy and not <laughs> oh, a puppet running yeah yeah which which was okay for me but it's just it the size you can find a skinnier little kid <laughs> i honestly it was funny or just make the puppet yeah. a little thicker <laughs> a little thicker puppet because, yeah, when you first see the puppet and he's naked by this pond. Yeah, that was kind of awkward. <laughs> yeah, I was strange. I, I was like, okay, this is a little weird. We've got the naked boy here playing his flute near the pond. I guess he just went for a swim. Henry Darger wrote the uh, screenplay. <laughs> oh, he did? Okay. He, yeah. um, and Frank Oz co-directed it. Who He did, like, Return to Oz, right? Mm, I don't think so. I don't know what he did. Somebody, I watched the, uh, something about it. It wasn't, it was some random guy who, like, has a lot of support, had a lot of support from, like, Hollywood directors, because oh, in Return to Oz, they fired him. They were gonna, you know, either oh, so scrap it or completely it, redo it. It might, I don't know if it was Frank Oz, it might have been. But whoever it was, right. he <laughs> got fired, and then, like, George <laughs> Lucas and shit spoke up, like, Hey, put him back on, man. Right. I'm well, George they Lucas. Of, they had a lot of clout back then. And I'm a stoner, bro. Yeah, George Lucas. Yeah. One with the force, B. <laughs> yeah. What, um... What would your rating for this movie be? What would you... Yeah, um, so... If, if I was just ba basing the rating on artistry and... Yeah. Um, you know, practical effects and everything, it would be like a 10 out of 10. If yeah. we were just talking about just all of the amazing craftsmanship that is in the movie. But um, being realistic, uh, I'd have to go like 7 out of 10, yeah. probably. You know? I, I mean, it's really good. I definitely yeah. would want people to see the movie if they've never seen it before. Um, it's a good movie to, sh you know, like I said, show your kids, maybe if they're a little older, seven years old, maybe, um, and, uh, you know, pass it down, you know, try to, try to pass this down, this more older style of filmmaking, yeah. which I think is important and we need to get back towards the style of filmmaking in a lot of ways. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd go seven out of ten. I, I, uh, feel about the same. Yeah. It's, um... The thing is, it's a kid's movie where there's an adventure. Mm -hmm. It's not just random scenes strewn together just to pass time. Yeah. They, um... There's a sense of progression. Yeah, there's a story. There's some thought behind everything, you know? There was... Because there was people who had a vision coming together and making that vision happen. Yeah. The music... I love that score so much. It's so, yeah. uh, so moving main theme yeah well and i think what you said you know vision is is a key word like they clearly had a very very specific idea of what they wanted to do and they accomplished that and that's um that's important because there's a lot of directors out there that don't have vision and this is definitely a movie that has it scope grandeur yeah there um i feel like if the music the uh, practical effects, the story, if either one of those things or something else I'm not thinking of right now just wasn't working or a little, yeah, a little off, yeah, it, would. it would, I think it would cripple this thing. Oh yeah, for sure. It'd come off either cheesy, goofy, or just too overthought. Yeah. So with that in mind, colors are amazing too. Yeah, the, the colors. Uh, colors. Yeah. 
I'll go. I'll go seven. Yeah. There's tension. There's uh, stakes. That's what kids' movies are missing. Like that's what makes a story interesting. If there's no stakes, if there's no tension, yeah. then and and there is violence in it. You know, there is. Um, like you said, there's stakes. There's um, at least one, at least two character name characters die. Yeah. And you know, I I felt myself. You know, I didn't cry, but I was I was getting a little emotional. You're gonna cry. You know? <laughs> Nah, it didn't get misty. It didn't get misty in the theater, but uh, yeah. but um, yeah, I was. Uh, um, you were getting a little, getting a little emotional. I was get getting it. a little it's emotional right. towards the end of that, yeah. and um, you know that that says a lot that a movie after all these years, you know, can still make you feel a little something. Because there was stakes. Yeah. The um. Fuck, I just, there's something that I've thought of three or four times, and then I, we got off track, or we were talking about something, and I forgot <laughs> about it. There's this one scene in the beginning where, uh, it's, it's, sh that's another thing about the symmetry, the Eastern thought about it. It, um, it really goes hard to show you that. In the beginning, it starts with the Skexes, and the Emperor is dying. There are only <laughs> ten left. Which is a funny scene. <laughs> I, there is some comic relief in the movie, yeah. and I love that when. Uh, well, one just of the, watching it, I realizing yeah. it this time, I didn't notice it before. The emperor killed himself. He's he sitting there breathing. Off. He's just laying there, dying. You know, mm -hmm. he made it faster in his lust for to hold on to his power. Oh right, the yeah. mystic. He's like, he just lays his head down, tells Jen what he has to do, right, and then just goes. Yeah, that, that it's sort of the symmetry. You know what I mean? The um, mm -hmm. juxtaposition. Yeah, yeah. There's a really funny scene during that one. One of the what were you, Krexes or whatever you call them. Skexes. They try to grab his uh, his staff, his wand thing, and he's just like, "No, no, touch that!" <laughs> it's just great. I'm still emperor. <laughs> Which is really funny. Did I just do a good ass impression of him? <laughs> yeah, you did. I am still the Emperor. Why, um, Huck? Hey, Hollywood, yeah. give me some fucking voiceover work. Come on, I'm a goddamn star. <laughs> and uh, it's really cool how when he finally dies, like his whole being just like crumbles into ash. What happened like, to the cool. uh, mystic? Did he crumble into ash or no, just sort he, of light? He just evaporated yeah. into the force into the, evaporated. <laughs> yeah, he force evaporated into the. Into the nether. Something tells me Ryan Johnson saw the Dark Crystal. Ryan, why do you say that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> don't. No spoilers. No but... real spoilers, except for the AIDS thing. <laughs> I couldn't believe, can't believe Luke went there. He yeah. was such a nice guy. He worked, and then he went to this random planet just to make AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, that was, He really subverted expectations there. He also liked to um, breed goats with himself. Yes. Yeah, a lot of uh, space cow jerking off. You gotta do what you gotta do. On an isolated island, you're a wizard. A warlock of sorts. A distant memory. Yeah. A star. Do you think I could be a, um, a stream of conscious po poet? <laughs> stream of conscious poet, eh? I think it's Start a pretty good idea. Out the haikus. Copyright. Stream of conscious poet. Stream of conscious poet. Copyright Rudy Land, 2018. The Tarvia, the lights, the building. The cars, the rubber, the rubber, the mist. Jesus. <laughs> All right, there you go. What, uh, what kind of previews did they, what the trivia, was it just like uh, cards, just title cards? Yeah, no. and the, there was lots of trivia before the, the movie started, and... Um, it, it, was, it didn't even stay up the only couple times I tried to read it. It didn't stay up long enough yeah, for me to read it. It went by really fast. There was also this like weird like people kind of like talking, like the audio was that was behind the, the trivia yeah. cards. It was like, I was like, oh, oh that's weird. Why Especially that? when no, everyone was silent when I got in the theater. Yeah. Well, there was one guy who was talking to some girls behind us about the Studio Ghibli movies. Oh yeah, but yeah. those during the previews. You can talk as much you want during previews. As soon as that. Goddamn yeah. movie starts. If you can't quiet the kid down, kindly escort them <laughs> to the nearest pothole. <laughs> Lift up the lid and throw them down. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> or the nearest crevasse, whatever, yeah. whatever you, whatever you're nearest to. <laughs> crevasse. I don't know. I just like some words. I just like the way they sound. I will never. I never like the way the word croissant sounds. I don't ever drop croissant on you. Croissant, no. I used to work at a grocery store in a hoity-toity area. Yeah, that's oh, how they. That's how off. they would say it. <laughs> What's you at this certain grocery store? Quaffon. The bakery section. You just throw. Uh, you just throw whatever in a bag, and I'll be like, "What do you got in the bag?" Oh, two quaffon. What do you? What'd you say? <laughs> two quaffon. Quaffon. I don't know what that is. Yeah, nah, like, yeah. You really threw me off there. I had no idea. Quaffon. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what it makes me think of, or what it sounds like, but it's like it's so alien to sounds me. Like quaff. Quaffon. The uh, Coca-Cola ad. I swear to this. I don't think subliminal anyone believes messaging. me. The subliminal messaging. <laughs> it sounds like a goddamn Aliens theme. It sounds like a scene from Aliens. Yeah, if but you close set to your Coke. Eyes. I don't even have to close my eyes. I can <laughs> see it. I got the vision, like, man. I got the well, vision. What does it sound like? Like one of the chest bursters like inside the egg just going... <laughs> no, nah, just the sound. This music is very horror, horror-y. And then the uh, sound of ice getting hit by soda, ice hitting the glass. Oh, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. It makes me think of Alien for some reason. Yeah, that's definitely what the marketing people are trying to do. <laughs> do you think I could be like a, a marketing raider? Is that such a thing? A marketing raider. Like I rate, that? I rate like your marketing. Oh, you rate your marketing? You just watch people's commercials and be like, yeah, that's shit. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. You want to be the uh, you want to be a test screener for commercials. Yeah. <laughs> Corner of the market, homie. You just homie. want to watch commercials for eight hours a day. And I give could. Notes. Hey, I could do that. Um, yeah. I have. I don't know if they do that, but they might. I wouldn't be shocked. I gotta. I gotta write my nearest congressman. Maybe you could hook me up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, I would like to rate commercials and be paid a handsome amount of money for it. Hey. hey. <laughs> It done. You doesn't work <laughs> unless you try. Hey, we're making big bucks off of these, and oh, what if yeah. we didn't? Even, what if we didn't even try? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for my millions of fans out there, I love uh, each and every one of you. But don't ever approach me. Don't ever dare looking at me in the eyes. <laughs> don't. If you even think about uttering a word, uttering a sound, anything audible. If your foot touching the ground is heard by me. I will berate you. I will berate you into childlike wonder. Mm. More stream of conscious poetry. Oh, yeah. I was just going to point at them and go, shame, shame, shame. Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> Sometimes I wish I was a soul I singer. I can't remember what that's from, the shame. I, I think I just saw it, rewatched something. See, you're saying it, and I'm like, it sounds familiar, shame. but I don't know what it is. Is it a comedy? Yeah. Oh yeah, it was what we do in the shadows. That's what it was. Oh, when okay. they kick out one of the like uh, guys from the house who they just bit, because he, um, he, the old vampire. Yeah, dies the old vampire bites because he doesn't close. Um, oh yeah, he doesn't close the blinds or something. <laughs> yeah. And he lets a vampire in, and then he bursts it. That's a good little film if you haven't seen it. I liked yeah. it. I he doesn't like it as much on second or third. Yeah, viewing. the second viewing it didn't hold up. I've as only well. seen it once. There's one phenomenal joke in it about um, how, <laughs> how they, uh, they're being interviewed and he says, uh, what's, uh, what's with uh, drinking the blood of virgins? And he goes, oh, well, you know, you would, like, say, for instance, if you were eating a sandwich, you would prefer if no one had fucked that sandwich before. Yes. <laughs> I, love, I love movies like that where there's jokes, man. It's actual fault. And it's like a total it. curveball joke, too. Yeah. Just, you know, that one really, like, you think it's going one way, and then they're just, oh, hell. <laughs> Naked Gun, I like a lot, too. Haven't seen it in years. It's very silly. Very I, goofy. I remember, like, one scene where they're having, like, a shootout. Huh. And, like, Leslie Mann standing behind this box. And they keep going like this. Leslie and Mann? Then, yeah, that's that's the that's his name, right? Leslie Nielsen. Leslie Nielsen, right. Yeah, whatever. I was thinking of Judd Apatow's wife, sorry. I, yeah, that's why I'm like, wait, Leslie Mann was <laughs> in she one was of the, in the Naked, naked Gun, gun movies? Yeah, she, was a, she was a baby. <laughs> Damn, she was but, sexy. She, she was a baby. She was a sexy baby. <laughs> the way you said she was a sexy baby. <laughs> You're killing the tension! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's this scene where these two guys are shooting at each other, and then they go to a wide shot, and the boxes are literally right next yeah. to each other. <laughs> 
Yeah. Who was the Indian dude in it? Uh, I, is I, he a I comedian? Can, I can only picture Leslie Nielsen in that movie. I literally can't remember anyone else's face. Was, was OJ in it? OJ was in it. That's right, uh, OJ was in it. Yeah. OJ was in it. The guy, a famous act, a famous, a name actor was in it. I can't remember his name. He was the uh, curly chief. Curly hair? I can't remember. The lady who was in it, I've never seen her in like anything else but Naked Gun. Hmm. Yeah. Priscilla Presley. Priscilla Presley. Elvis Presley's daughter? I think so. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. She, her last name is Presley, you're saying, so. I, I think no it, I could be way off. I Again, they, I'm really tired, yeah, as think, you can imagine. Yeah, I think they had uh, Naked Gun on uh, Netflix recently. I think it went off, though. So. See, the problem with Netflix is for months they'll have the same stable of 10, 15 or so real good movies, and then I feel like the rest is straight to DVD trash. Yeah. I, I watched that straight to DVD trash. I can't get I, into it because I, I know it's going to be bad, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, I go in hoping that maybe this could actually Is be Ravenous better. still on there? No, they took it off. I was Ravenous is good if yeah. you get a chance. Yeah, I told you about that one. Guy um, Pierce and uh, Robert, Carlyle. Robert Carlyle. You know, Robert Carlyle, I'm surprised I didn't, great. you don't see him in a lot more. I just saw, Did well, he, he just stay in Europe a lot? No, he's on that stupid fucking show on ABC, Once Upon a Time. Oh, yeah. And he made so much money off that, he doesn't need to do anything else. I did see him recently in the Train Spotting sequel. T2. There was a Train Spotting sequel? Yeah, T2 Train Spotting came out. Did Danny years Boyle ago. make it? Yep. He was it make good? It. I did not like it. You might like it, though. There's a lot of people that like it. I, uh, I was not a fan. I really did not like it at all. I don't remember the first one being as funny as I thought it'd be. It was a lot more down. That's more the thing is I down. never even really liked the first one. Yeah. It was There's about some... heroin addiction, man. I don't think you're supposed to like, yeah, it's not like really, what uh, you're seeing. You it's know? not a feel-good movie. Seeing people addicted to drugs like Requiem for a Dream. Requiem for, you know, fucking, what's it called? Might as well be gone with, might as well be Wizard of Oz compared to that movie, man. What? Rec, uh. Requiem. Might as, Requiem's? not Requiem might as well be. What did I, what did you say, what would you say before? Um. Train Spotting. Train Spotting. Train Spotting might as well Wizard be the Oz. Wizard of Oz compared to, uh. Dream, yeah. I love the score, I love the score, but for God's sakes, how many previews had to have it, man? <laughs> Those violins. Oh, score. yeah. Keith David. Keith. Keith David appeared in uh, Requiem for a Dream alongside Jennifer. Marlon Wayans. Marlon Wayans. The only yeah. movie I've seen him in that I really yeah. thought he acted really well. He actually long. tries to act in it. Yeah. Did you ever see that Robin Williams movie he was in? Robin Maybe he it wasn't Marlon Way Marlon Wayans. Are you talking you about some uh, Midsummer the... Night's Dream or something? Uh, the one with Kevin Klein? Nah, not that then. The thing about the Lady Killers, she was in that. The Coen's dead with Tom Hanks. Nah, so I'm not thinking of. I kind of want to revisit that. For some somebody reason. just told me it was good. I've never seen it. Uh, it, was, it was the good. Hanks accent in the previews. Kinda, yeah, kind of took I, me. They out showed of it. a little bit of it on TV, and I was watching it, and I was like, oh, I kind of want to revisit this. And then a commercial came on, and I was like, oh, fuck this. See, that's what <laughs> um, I can't. I can get down with commercials if it's uncensored, and I can get down with it not being yeah. censored if there are no commercials. You can't do both TV. Yeah. If it, if it was uncensored, I would have continued to watch it with the commercials. But yeah, there was IFC and Sundance used to play movies all the time un, uncensored completely. Yeah. Now they're all censored. They're all censored. I don't know about really? all, but at least during the day. Wow, that's weird. That it's pretty like... depressing at one in the afternoon when you're playing Basic Instinct and you. C why would you even play Basic Instinct if you can't show the movie? Yeah, must, that movie must be like thirty minutes long. Yeah. <laughs> it. The whole point of the movie is, you know, sex and sleeves yeah, it's and Paul stuff. Paul Verhoeven's like big time sex movie. Yeah. You know? Do you like Basic Instinct? Um, I I haven't seen it in quite a few years. It holds a special place in my heart because Sharon I was, Stone does all that lesbian it, stuff and all that sex stuff uh, I was, on screen for I was your very, pleasure. I was very young when I saw it, and that was the first vagina I saw. I was like, whoa, hey oh, hey -o. <laughs> Hey -o. Got Ed McMahon with us in the back. He's tied up in the trunk. You didn't know, did you? It's because he's silent during a performance. Yeah. 
And uh, that was a that was a tricky movie to jerk off to back in the day. On VHS. I didn't find any trouble. On, oh really? Because you could on uh, Netflix or Hulu, you wherever could, I watched You could make a big it. mistake and uh, get Newman's face as you were climaxing. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta, you gotta be careful with that pause button. The slow frame. Why didn't Newman get more acting roles? He's always solid in all the movies he's in. Yeah. Jurassic Park, he was, he's the he was, he's um, the what set the entire movie into action. He was basically. actually pretty good in Punisher Warzone, too. He plays Mike. Yeah. Um, I didn't like him. Did he have a soul patch or like a different hairstyle yeah, or something? Patch. He had a soul patch. That threw me off. But um, he. I think he just makes so much fucking money from Seinfeld reruns that he just doesn't need to work. Huh. You know. I mean, they they must have made so much fucking money from that just show. Just how crazy guys. is Lee that? Kramer. He doesn't do anything. Every time an episode is on TV anywhere, you get a check. Yeah. Pretty crazy. And I think, I don't know if Hulu did a massive deal with Well, yeah, because they just got all the episodes, yeah, definitely. So they, they're getting even bigger checks now. <laughs> and he just, Seinfeld just hooked up with Netflix. His uh, yeah. Cars with Coffee thing is on there. He's I used got to, a couple specials. I used to love watching that on Crackle. I've never watched that. And I stopped watching it. Is it good? I mean, it was. It's kind of short episodes, 10, 14 minute episodes. Well, that's good. They're like bite uh, size. Aqua Teen Hunger Force, but a yeah. little more... Dignified, I guess you could say, a little more eloquent. Have uh, Have you seen any of his Netflix specials that mm-hmm. he just did? He did like some huge deal. Like they paid him like a hundred million dollars. Are they good? Do you see them? No, I haven't seen them. It's like his jokes before he started stand up. Jerry before Seinfeld was the one of them. Yeah, I might give so, him a shot. Yeah. If you get I a chance to watch Basic Instinct, guys, yeah, watch Basic that. Instinct. It's um. Sharon Stone with an ice pick, looking hot. Atmosphere. Yeah. That's a movie that Atmosphere is, is second and yeah. none. Love well, Michael good. Douglas in that. He's he's really good in specific roles. And that kind of fatal attraction type movies he's so good in. I like Kirk I like Michael Douglas. I like Kirk Douglas too. I think he's pretty good. Yeah. Um Mike- What's an example of Michael Douglas being bad? Give me one. You thought it didn't work. Uh well I, the first thing that came to mind was don't say a word. Don't say a word. Yeah, it was with Sean Bean and um, the, the actress is dead now. She was really young when she died. How long think. ago did it come out? I think it was like 2000. He plays like a psychiatrist and they're after like this jewel. Oh, after a, is there ghosts involved or is that no. the one with uh, De Niro? I think it's Sterling Echoes with Kevin Bacon. There's one with De Niro where he's a therapist or his daughter is talking to a ghost or he thinks he's talking to a ghost. It was in the previews. I never saw it, though. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't... I don't know. It's tough. Yeah. I, um... I think, um... He, uh... De Niro. I don't know. He's just fallen off so hard. You ever see Freelancers? No, is that one with 50 Cent? Yes. Oh, God, no. Yeah. Forrest Whitaker, no, 50 Cent, that. Bubbles from the game, from the Wire is is in it. It's one of the worst movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, he's just sabotaging his career. I mean, the last good movie that he's done. Jesus. Did you see that one where he was like a secretary at Google or something? The Intern? The Intern. Uh-huh. I like it's like it's funny to say I know all these movies, but I've never seen a lot of them. Well, the thing the previews are powerful, man. We we're talking about marketing earlier. Yeah. Like they they're designed for you to remember and to stick stick with you, you know. Yeah. But so is the way of the world. Psychological manipulation is our um is our horror, our hell, our our prison cell. <laughs> Poetic slam. Poetic slam. And as I say that, we're being observed by two security guards. Yeah. They um, seem hell bent on, uh, hell bent on disrupting this talk. Mm-hmm. It's um, very awkward. I kind of want to end it just so they'll leave us alone. But I also don't want to end it. I want to sit here and waste their time. You know. <laughs> right. I'm gonna. I wanna. Um. But you know, because we're not doing anything weird. No drugs are being consumed. <laughs> um. We're just sitting here, hanging out. Yeah. But, whatever. Yeah, what time is it? It is uh, a time unlike any other. Uh. I took a picture of them, just so I didn't even get them. <laughs> the time is uh, 
944. Apparently. Time of death is called. <laughs> and uh, we'll close it with this. Any um, video game recommendations? Video game recommendations. Do we want to limit it to certain systems or... Any game you can feel like playing or you feel any, like recommending. Any game I feel like recommending. Yeah. For some... For new gamer, old gamer. Anybody. Hmm. Whatever you feel like playing. It's your fucking recommendation. Oh, what do you... How do you not get this by now? <laughs> how do you... How are you not understanding what's going on? I'm trying on? to limit the parameters. Um, trying to think. Something. Two games... Don't even have to be two. Just whatever you're thinking of. Well, I, for some reason, I keep thinking about Shovel Knight, which is like one of the last games that you really wowed you. That yeah, I really loved because just almost everything that comes out now, I just hate. Yeah. Or just I have no interest or play for 15 minutes. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. So Shovel Knight is um, that would be one of my really strong recommendations. Like if you haven't played that game oh my god they've had two expansions that were really good from it harkens back it's to on all the consoles it's on pc it's on yeah it's even on 360 or just xbox one and, um, and it playstation even, three or four yeah and it wouldn't even exist uh if it wasn't for kickstarter which is kind of cool it's one of those shining examples of you know crowdfunding that was done right. actually working too <laughs> yeah right so that would be my first game i um so, what are you thinking I say Super Ghouls and Ghosts for any system you can get it for. Um, it's it is pretty hard when you first get it. You got to get used to the game. It's uh, very challenging, but that's what I like about it. There's a I'm pretty sure there's unlimited continues, but I feel like at one point when I was playing on an emulator, it said game over. It's uh, it's very very challenging, but once you get into the flow of the game. You know, maybe learn some of the patterns and do a lot better. You do have to beat it twice the entire game. Oh, yeah. To actually beat it. I mean, to see the ending boss. You could just yeah, beat it once boss. and not beat the boss. You, know? you said ghouls and ghosts? Super. Super ghouls and ghosts? Super ghosts and goblins. Super ghosts and goblins? It's, I, I, no, super ghouls and ghosts. Ghosts <laughs> and goblins is the NES. There's it's the a, previous game. There's a really funny story with that game. There was a video game show called X-Play. Yeah. And it was on uh, G4 TV, and it was like like a really great video game show. And uh, the host of it, Adam Sessler, when he was a kid, yeah. that was uh, <laughs> like the one game that he got for the NES. And uh, and um, he couldn't beat it. And well, he he was playing it with his brother. Yeah. And they were like switching the controller back and forth because they were getting tired. They were playing it all day, and they. Um, they got towards the uh, they, they got towards the end of the game and they beat it. Yeah. And then the screen came up that said you have to beat it again to get the real ending. <laughs> and his little brother just started crying nonstop. Because it's it it probably you know how many hours they probably put into that oh, game. Yeah. Like that just crushes the soul right there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That was when games, man, is they had that arcade. It's difficulty. either it's either you beat them or you you're going back to level <laughs> one, or yeah. you're staying where you're at. Yeah, they did not care, and you know because you know there wasn't as much to do back then. People nah. just sat there and bashed their head against the wall. <laughs> well, that's what I like about it. It's the games now. I don't know if it's 3D or they just. It's usually they feels like bad storytelling to me. As yeah. opposed to a good game, you know? <laughs> yeah, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, man. Yeah, I just... I, I wonder if the new versions of that, the digital versions, you can quick save or not. If they allow Well, if that. you get an emulate, If yeah. you get it on an emulator. You can get it on MAME, oh, probably, because yeah, it is... Yeah, it was an arcade gosh. game. Yeah, I just... Uh, whew. Yeah. I, <laughs> I am not a glutton for punishment. I'm not into games like Dark well, Souls. Well, I just like so. it to actually... I've never played Dark Souls, but I yeah. like... I like it to be hard. It feels way mm. more rewarding to actually beat it. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a sense of accomplishment. A strong yeah. sense of accomplishment. But it also can make you go prematurely gray. <laughs> yeah. You definitely will flip out <laughs> playing video games and stuff. But, you know, it's fun. It's even better when you beat it. Yeah. There's, like you say, there's a higher sense of uh, accomplishment for sure. Yeah. yeah. What, um... 
got any others for me or another game <sighs> trying to thank you huh? trying to think of some you know triple a games that i actually enjoyed i got um, one i'll give you one after you give me, me yours yeah or i'll just give you one now hmm. The original Bioshock. I the love that game. Bioshock, yeah. Atmosphere. You talk about atmosphere. Yeah. That's a game. The I, sequel wasn't as bad. Wasn't as bad as everybody two says. Or it's all right. Two. Infinite was awful. I really? hated you Infinite. Hated Infinite. Wow. I never beat uh, Bioshock. Mm. Yeah. I. Uh, it was just like I. I love horror, yeah. but I hate horror video games. I just cannot take it. Too I, scary. It, it's just the suspense. Uh, yeah. It's like. It's it's unbearable for me because like you, it's all on you. You mm. got to progress forward. Yeah. Whereas the horror elements in Infinite were pretty limited, except for the cemetery. Scene. The thing about Infinite is it was so drastically different from what the other games yeah. were. The other games were like an open world. You can go here, you can go there to collect everything. Well, I mean, it is open in a lot of ways of where you can go. <sighs> yeah, around. but it's contained. Once you go, once you cross some place, once you cross into this place, you can't go back and get something you missed. Yeah. Also, only two guns was infuriating to me. Everything felt like... Well, I was lucky. I uh, upgraded the very specific weapons. Yeah. There was the hand cannon, the pistol. Yeah. If you upgraded that thing, it was just so powerful. And I would always have, like, um, I think it was the volley gun, which was like a grenade launcher. Yeah. And I would switch that between the rocket launcher. And um, my potion was always murder of crows. Yeah. So you just push the crows, and that pushed them back, and then you just like you would just like one shot kill everybody with the with the pistol. So I, I picked the right weapons. Yeah. Because I mean, it really did get bullet spongy with like the machine gun. Oh man. Yes. It was, it was just you just it was like well, I can't even kill anybody. The thing is, every single here's what the entire game was for me. Walk this way for a little bit. Sort of heavy-handed racism parallels that don't really jive that well right. sort of and then uh 10 guys come you kill them move to the next scene 10 guys come you kill them move to the next scene 10 guys come kill them yeah. more racist parallels and then bullshit science fiction it doesn't yeah. even make sense the when ending, you sit back and think about it. The ending is very weird, and it's tough to kind of... I love 2001 sense. A Space Odyssey, and I fucking hate the ending of oh, Bioshock, Bioshock Infinite. Infinite. I, I hate the ending battle of that game. It's just torturous. It's very anticlimactic. Yeah, because most of all the, the boss battles in um, Infinite, when you're playing it, huh. um, you're slowly doing damage to them, and if you die, all of that damage carries over. Yeah. So if you got the boss all the way down to like a couple, so hit there's points, like no challenge at all. Yeah, well but the you original the game. game, the original game was like that. If it you was. died, you would um, wake up in a. Yeah. I think they called them Vita Chambers. Well, I mean, if you hated it, you know, I mean, the same guy who wrote the first one wrote that. Yeah, I know. So it was his vision. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it worked for me except for the end of the battle. It's which just was. It's the first one. Just yeah. The first one was so good to me. Yeah. And then the third one is so vastly different yeah almost everybody thinks you know bioshock is one of the greatest uh, games of all time i really like it i love the atmosphere yeah. i'm a big the atmosphere is what draws you in yeah it's the and rand type underwater city thing or whatever but unlike all the f retarded socialists out there <laughs> or reverse socialists out there right. and rand's ideas they wouldn't be good I, they would they would be pretty bad. They would be. Yeah, and would, the game the game illustrates an interpretation of what would happen if yeah. and ran society existed under the sea. <laughs> under the sea. Yeah. I'm still the emperor. <laughs> I'm trying to think of another game. Um, no, you don't. You haven't played games long. Well, playing much? You're not thinking about it. Sorry. Right. There. Uh, there's a couple other indie games I could bring up to be a hipster <laughs> but uh, I would say uh, there is a really cool kind of platformer called Thomas Was Alone Yeah. Um, and it's it's really simplistic it's um, it's basically you play a little block yeah. and uh, there's this really great voiceover it was, it was made in uh, Britain so it's all British and there's all these different kinds of blocks and they all have different voices and and you have to solve all these different puzzles yeah. Being these little different blocks, and uh, it's actually kind of a moving story, so you can get it for, like pretty cheap. Um, Thomas was alone. It's a cool little platform. Indie game. 
Yeah. Well, indie games, good thing about indie games is there are many. Many of them are probably pretty bad. Yes. But many good ones are pretty cheap. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem with Steam is Steam is just a dumping ground for every just uh, um, asset flip in the world. But uh, there's more um, curation on, on like, PlayStation. So, yeah, I'd give that one a go. With all that said, I think it's fair to say... Mm. I am still the Emperor! <laughs> and... What was the other one? Uh, the, the Kalukali! 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 <laughs> yeah. Everybody? It's been a journey. Love a brother. Love a mother. Dance forever. I am still the Emperor! <laughs>